Whelan Presley and Van Ho Funeral Homes have been serving Quad City families and veterans for over 100 years. Whelan Presley is located in Rock Island, Milan, Reynolds, and Van Ho in East Moline, proudly supporting WQPT. Alternatives is a proud supporter of WQPT and has been serving our community for 40 years. Alternatives provides professional guidance to maintain independence and quality of life for older adults and adults with disabilities. Filing your taxes isn't getting any easier, but a unique United Way program could help. And turning an old library into a performance hall. It's time to play the Carnegie in the cities. Moline's old Carnegie Library sat empty for years, but there's new life inside. That's still to come. But first, taxes. The annual drudgery of filing your income taxes is upon us all right now. But lower income families may have little ability to make the most out of the tax benefits they receive. And let's be honest, everyone is entitled to taking advantage of changes in the law this year. The United Way of the Quad Cities is offering tax preparation help at a number of locations right now. Max Biak with the VITO program, or Volunteer Income Tax Assistant Program, join us to walk us through the process. So the VITA program has been around for a while. It has. Um, through United Way, we've um, sponsored the program for about 20 years now. Wow. And, and who is eligible for this tax assistance? Yeah, um, individuals who earn less than 64000 annually are eligible for the VITA program. And, and tell me a little bit about who does uh, come in. I mean, it can be anybody and, 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 and everybody has a need to prepare their taxes. Absolutely. Typically, we see a lot of younger families. See. Um, we see a lot of old, maybe retired folk um, and then anyone in between. Like I said, the program is designed for anyone who wants to utilize the service. And, and, but you have income limits. It's not everybody. And, and they have to register ahead of time? They do. Um, we do take appointments. Um, we have uh, four locations in the Quad Cities. Three of them are appointment-based, and then the Martin Luther King Center in Rock Island is walk-ins. Okay, and, and what does that mean when you say it's a walk-in? Uh, they take a certain amount of people, every, you know, depending on how many volunteers they have, um, and then though it's, it's first come, first serve. So, you know, you really want to get there early, get a number, and then, you know, we'll get you in. And, and this is going on, what, from February 1st until the Friday before taxes are due? Yes, sir. Um, it is. It's February 1st through April 12th. Okay, and so... It, it, during that period of time, the reservations or, or, or people calling ahead of time, I mean, scheduling, it gets pretty full, doesn't it? It does. We, um, we are filling up very quickly. I encourage anyone who's listening or maybe is interested in this program, please give us a call. Get your name in there because um, we will fill up very fast. And you have tax professionals. I mean, who's doing the tax preparations? Yeah, we do. Um, like I said, we have site coordinators. These are people who have been in the tax industry for many years. Um, we receive a lot of student volunteers, those, you know, um, accountant majors um, from Western Illinois. We received them from Augustana and Ambrose. Um, it's usually, like I said, retired folk or just anyone who has interest in the program. You don't have to have the tax background to do it. We have different roles in the positions. You can greet people. You can check people in. Um, like I said, there's a lot of different things besides just preparing the taxes. And the Western Illinois University is kind of special they for are, the Quad yes. Cities. Why is that? Uh, they are special because they are a bilingual site. Um, so we have staff members there that can help those that um, English is not their first language. This is your first year of being the coordinator for this program. Yes, sir. You do know how popular it is. I mean, we, tell me a little bit about what you're walking into. Yeah. Um, so last year, we partnered with the American Association of Retired People. Um, so between them, we handled the scheduling for eight locations in the Quad Cities. Last year, we prepared 3,300 returns. Wow, that is a lot of returns. It is, it is returns. Um, and, and tell me a little bit more about, because um, we were talking about the eligibility of people who can show up. Um, I mean, do they have to prove how does this work? Yeah, um, you know, I would encourage anyone um, showing up, bring all, all the tax documents you can. Um, any tax documents from last year, bring your forms this year, your social security, uh, social security card, your driver's license. And honestly, anything you think you might need to bring, go ahead and bring it. We'd rather you bring too many things than not enough things. Yeah, I mean, that, that is the problem. And, and here's the thing is that 
You hear this all the time, whether you think you should declare or not declare certain monies, declare everything with, with, with the hope that, uh, you know, you, you get through the tax process okay. Absolutely. Um, also, those, um, those also additional reporting income, those go towards your Social Security benefits and retirement. So, you know, it's maybe it's kind of a pay it forward thing. You know, you might not receive it now, but you will receive it in the future. Tell me a little bit about uh, the, the people that are preparing the taxes. Are, are they prepared for all the tax changes that have occurred in both Iowa and Illinois as well as federally? Yes, they are. Um, anyone who wants to volunteer in our program, they have to go through certifications and take um, examinations. So everyone who's gone through the program is fully certified and is, is knowledgeable on both changes, like I said, Iowa, Illinois, and federally. And that's a big deal because uh, uh, the people that sign up, it's not just for Iowa and it's not just for Illinois. No, it's uh, federal as well. And um, Typically what we've seen this year, I don't know if you've noticed yet, the, the Iowa form has changed a lot this year. They've kind of completely overhauled it. Um, one of the biggest differences we've seen is in itemized deductions. Typically before you could on the Iowa side do that federally and at the state level, you cannot do that anymore is only at the federal level. So they've just kind of changed the form a little bit. Well, and these changes are something that the, a lot of people may not catch. Absolutely. And that's why, I mean, that's why having somebody help you prepare the taxes is a big deal. Absolutely. Um, we, um, like I said, the volunteers are trained. Um, they're they're fairly knowledge knowledgeable on the subject matter. Um, you are in very good hands coming to our locations. Um, these people are very passionate about the work they do. And then tell me once again, it's important to register right away because the slots are filling up. We are filling up very quickly. Um, typically, right now, if you want to get in, we're looking at early to middle March, and like I said, the program runs till early April. So we are closing very quickly. And we encourage you to either give us a call or visit our website to schedule an appointment. I was going to say, how do you do that? Yeah, um, so I would visit www.unitedwayqc.org. Right there, you'll be directed to register online. Or if you aren't comfortable doing that, I'd encourage you to give us a call at 563-355-4310. You got that number down, Pat. I've heard that number a lot. <laughs> Our thanks to Max Biak with the United Way of the Quad Cities Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. Mo Carter has been performing on stages throughout the Quad Cities over the past few years. This self-styled charismatic troubadour visited us at Moline's Black Box Theater a few months ago to perform one of her originals. So here's Mo Carter with Hardware Store Man.
Mo Carter with Hardware Store Man performed at the Black Box Theater in downtown Moline. And near that theater is the Carnegie Library. It was once a busy go-to place in the heart of the city, but it's been dormant for years after the library moved out of downtown. But now the Sound Conservatory has moved in, and since last fall, it's brought back some of the life to that old library. We talked with Sound Conservatory founder Andre Kozlowski about the changes and what's still to come. So how do you like your new home? I mean, you've been in it, what, five months now? Uh, it's November 17th. Okay, it's so just a few opening. months. Yeah. And how do you like it? I love it. Because you found, you know, this is like almost a, a diamond in the rough. I mean, yeah. the Carnegie Library sat next to the post office empty for more than a decade. Yeah. I love that old library. We used to go in there. And you're, you're able to restore it. Yeah. So, you know, we came across that building. You know, it was an, an intentional thing where you know, we wanted to move. We, we had to move. And uh, I started broadening my search outside of Rock Island and... That was one of the first uh, buildings I came across. I didn't realize it was a Carnegie. Mm -hmm. And uh, until we uh, met up there with the realtor to take a look at it. I'm and like, then there's oh. the big... <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow. How did I miss this? This is, this is awesome. <laughs> uh, and um, so we took a tour of the building. And uh, it was very quick to see the layout of how we could utilize the space. You know, you've got the top floor that we've uh, converted into our teaching academy. So that's where our teachers have their lessons. Uh, the main floor is our uh, piano showroom, as well as instrument and accessories and uh, recital space that we currently just use our piano showroom for that. Uh, but we have plans in the stacks um, to convert that into a recital hall. And then a little section of the downstairs we're utilizing as a uh, piano restoration rebuilding shop. Um, and we actually have a, a piano we're working on from 1912, an old concert grand we're restoring for a customer. I was going to say, for those who aren't familiar with mm -hmm. Sound Conservancy, it, it's a bunch of different things, actually, because you, you yeah. have especially the pianos, yeah. but you also have the performance and you have the right. education part. Yeah. How did this all come about? Well, so I came up with the idea for the Sound Conservatory as um, originally as a music academy. Um, you know, I felt there was a need for it in the community. Uh, there's a big interest in music here. And um, I reached out to a few people and asked them what they would think if we were to open a place like this. And um, people were excited about the idea, you know, musicians and teachers. So we opened the shop as a teaching academy with just five studios. And um, we had couple of little things here for retail, you know, just basic uh, accessories that students may need, you know, when they're taking lessons like guitar strings, violin strings, books. And, um, you know, things started to grow from there. And before you know it, in about four months, we were fully packed uh, with lessons. And, uh, you know, the interest in pianos, our students, you know, needing pianos for taking lessons or upgrading instruments from a keyboard to a piano. So I was constantly looking for instruments for uh, our students and customers. And I realized, okay, I think I, we, we need to expand into the piano division as well. So that happened. Uh, and then we eventually moved into another building in downtown Rock Island. And uh, it, it just kept growing. You know, we've expanded uh, into full instrument and accessory retail, uh, instrument repair and servicing, uh, piano restoration, uh, and it, also performance space, you know, outside of our student recitals, I felt, uh, you know, we needed a middle ground uh, concert venue. You know, we've got these large concert venues and then we've got our small local uh, venues that can fit, you know, 60, 80, like your bars mm -hmm, and uh, right. things like that. Uh, so I wanted to create something that was kind of the in-between uh, for classical, for jazz, blues, rock, things like that. Um, and uh, you know, the concert series has been growing uh, fantastically. You know, we had our first concert uh, of 2024 featuring um, uh, several great artists from the Quad Cities uh, for Mozart's birthday celebration. And we had a packed house, about 130 people. And um, people were still coming in the door and we're telling them, sorry, there, there are no more seats available. And uh, people wanted to stand. Uh, they were excited about the concert. So, um, you know, I felt all, all these things that uh, we need in the community, it, it's showing it, it is needed because of the demand. Tell me about the building, because I would mm -hmm. think an old library, the acoustics wouldn't necessarily be all that good. Oh, they're amazing, actually. Uh, 
all of these uh, old buildings, the way they're built, you know, these large rooms with high ceilings, uh, with all the woodworking that's in that space. Uh, the sound is very clear. It carries without excessive reverb. So, you know, if you're sitting in a back corner or in the front in front of the performer, you're getting a, a perfect balance of sound. Um, and that, that was the experience during the Mozart concert. You know, I was taking pictures while the other performers were, uh, you know, performing. And no matter where I stood, the sound was exactly the same in all the space. You feel that this is the perfect home then, huh? I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. It fits all of our needs um, and future needs as well. And uh, it, it's in a perfect location. You know, downtown Moline has been just a wonderful place to be. The community, uh, you know, the city officials, as well as Renew Moline, it, it, Everyone has been working together very, very efficiently, and um, there is that strong sense of community uh, between everyone. And the artists can say they played at Carnegie Hall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's fantastic. Hey, one of the things I really do love the fact that it's a performance space. Mm -hmm. And not only are you doing music, you get a little bit of a murder mystery that's going yeah. on. It's going on right now. It's called The Stacks, mm -hmm. which has to do with what? The library uh, stacks, an immersive mystery. Somebody dies. Yeah. Or is dead. <laughs> so it, uh, Ben Couchon from Quatsetti Arts uh, came to our ribbon cutting. And, um, you know, he was standing there looking at the stacks. And he, you could see, you know, <laughs> he's, he's cooking something in his mind. And, um, um, you know, he asked me about the space, you know, what our plans are for the space. And I told him, you know, we, we plan on taking the stacks out of there to turn that into a full-size recital hall. And... Um, a day later, he sends me an email and says, hey, you know, I know you have plans for taking out those uh, stacks, but um, I was wondering if you would consider holding off on that for a little bit because I have something that, you know, I was inspired. Um, it's a immersive theater a murder mystery that I'm writing um, that would be perfect for that, uh, that space. So, you know, we sat down and talked about it, and I absolutely love the idea. Yeah. I've, I've never experienced anything like it and it's also very different than anything we've offered in uh, in the performance space so um, I told him yeah we'll definitely hold off on that you know for this this is a great idea uh, I've had the pleasure of watching the rehearsals uh, on Sundays while I'm there and uh, it's really exciting it's coming together beautifully um, and they're utilizing the stacks as well as po portions of the basement um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, the concept is just phenomenal. You know, instead of sitting there in the audience watching a play, you get to walk around and you get to pick what part of the play or what um, what scenes you follow. So you can come back on different nights and get a whole different perspective on the story. That is um, unusual. Uh, with, yeah, which, you know, when you go to see, go see a movie or a play on a stage, you see it once, you mm -hmm. come back, you're going to see it exactly the same thing. With this, every time you come back, you get a different experience depending on what you follow and you get a different perspective on, you know, what happened, how it happened, and, uh, you know, who and what was involved. So I, I think it's really exciting. So what do you see for 2024? What, what are your plans for this coming year? Because, I mean, yeah. like you said, you moved in in November. Yeah. You're already yep. sprinting rather than oh, walking. Yeah. yeah, we're at about 300 students, if not past that at this point. We need to do a new count. Um, we, you know, we're looking to bring on more teachers. Um, there is some work we need to do upstairs. Uh, we're looking to work with an architecture firm uh, to partition some of these large rooms into smaller rooms so we can bring more teachers on board. Uh, and then, it, like I mentioned, you know, tearing out the stacks, we're going to be looking at selling those book stacks as well as the marble floors that are, you know, dividing the top and uh, bottom floors of the stacks. Uh, turn that into a recital hall. Um, we've been working with a couple of companies to get quotes to do some uh, exterior restoration, cleaning the stone facade and just um, cleaning up some of the uh, mortar uh, in the bricks just so we can make sure the building is in good shape. Um, you love this structure. I absolutely And do. you do yeah. want to preserve it. Yes. it's, And, you know, th this particular library has a very fascinating uh, Part of history, it was the first Carnegie Library that Andrew Carnegie allowed his name to be put on. So every library that was built before this did not have his name on it. This was the first one of its kind, which is really exciting for the Quad Cities.
Our thanks to Sound Conservatory founder Andre Kozlowski. And once again, Stacks, an immersive mystery, is playing there this weekend and next weekend. Check out the details at soundconservatory.com. On the air, on the radio, on the web, on your mobile device, and streaming on your computer. Thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues on the cities. and Van Ho Funeral Homes have been serving Quad City families and veterans for over 100 years. Whelan Presley is located in Rock Island, Milan, Reynolds, and Van Ho in East Moline, proudly supporting WQPT. Alternatives is a proud supporter of WQPT and has been serving our community for 40 years. Alternatives provides professional guidance to maintain independence and quality of life for older adults and adults with disabilities.